Old buildings. They have a lot of history and charm. Sometimes. Over time, there have been lots of different types of buildings made. Some are big and scary, and some are small and cute. We can study a building and learn a lot about the ways things were back in the day. If you enjoy history, or even if you don't care about the past, you can still appreciate the way things were constructed a long time ago. Today, we're going to visit the oldest building in every single state. A lot of these were built before we were even a country. Some of them look really cool and old, and you'll wonder how they're even standing. And some of them look like regular buildings. You might even drive by them and not even know they're a part of history. A lot of these are old forts and log cabins and old missionaries. Anyway, we have a lot of stuff to cover, so we better get started. Now, finding the oldest building in every state was kind of tricky because there's lots of old structures. Like, does it count if it's a fallen down ruin? What if it's a cave? What counts as a building? What if it's been moved? We're gonna begin in Alabama. Not because Alabama's buildings are the coolest or the oldest, because we're starting with the letter A. Anyways, this is the Joel Eddins house, built in 1810 in the city of Ardmore. It's a two-story log cabin. That means it's made of logs, and to keep the logs together, they use a process called chinking. That fills the spaces between the logs. Chinking is to log cabins like mortar is to bricks. The chinking material is a mixture of clay, sand, lime, silt, ash, and dirt. If the logs fit properly, you don't have to chink nearly so much. Bye, Joel Eddins house. Ooh, this doesn't look very old now, does it? This was called the Erskine House, built in 1810. Now it's the Kodiak History Museum. For decades, this house hosted parties and weddings. It's the oldest log structure on the West Coast. It's supposedly haunted after a murder happened here in 1886, and now it's a private home. And way out in Alaska, that can't be enjoyable. Now that looks like something from Aladdin. It's the Mission San Javier del Bac. It's in Tucson. It was built in 1797. A Spanish guy named Father Eusebio Quino went to Mexico on a missionary and then traveled up to what's present day southern Arizona to try to convert the natives to Catholicism. He wound up building this as a church to do just that. Southern Arizona was once a part of Spain. Then at one point it became part of Mexico in 1821 and then eventually we kicked Mexico's butt and took Arizona for us. Anyways, this church is still open to the public this day. This one's simple looking, like much of Arkansas. This is the Hinder Litter Grog Shop, built in Little Rock in 1827. Like many taverns back in the day, leaders at the time used this building to gather and talk about political stuff. It was a tavern back in the day. What does that say about Arkansas, that their first ever building was a place to get drunk? Of course a mission is California's oldest building, come on now. This is the Mission San Juan Capistrano, built in 1776. Hey, that's the year we became a country. This building was built by using teams of indigenous Native Americans called Ahachimen. I don't know if they were forced to build this or if they did so at their own will, but they did a great job. And that golden altar that's inside was brought in from Barcelona. It was 333 years old when the building was made. That means the altar was built in the year 1436. The Mesa Verde Cliff Palace in Mesa Verde, Colorado was just about the oldest building in the country. It was finished in 1190, though I don't know how they would know the exact date. There's actually 600 buildings in this whole former city up here in the hillsides. It was made of sandstone, mortar, and wooden beams. A hundred people lived here at one time. The whole thing had 150 rooms. Who made it? The ancestral Pueblo people did. This is one of the oldest buildings in the country. It was made in 1639. It's called the Henry Whitfield House, and it's in Guilford, Connecticut. It's made of stone, which is why it's still standing. The guy who built it was a Puritan minister who fled England for religious freedom. He hid people inside who wanted to escape religious persecution too. This home in Namens Creek, Delaware was built by the Swedish people in 1654. Yes, even Sweden was over here on our side of the ocean trying to stake a claim. Originally built as a defensive structure, the Dutch captured it in 1655 and then the Native Americans attacked it in 1671 and then the British grabbed it in 1777. It has a lot of history. There's probably bullet holes if you looked close enough. St. Augustine's the oldest city in the country, founded in 1585 by the Spanish. Thusly, the oldest building in Florida should be here, and it is. This is the Castillo de San Marcos, built in 1695. It's the oldest masonry fort in the continental U.S. So if St. Augustine was founded in 1585, but the first building went up in 1695, where did everyone sleep for 110 years? Ooh, the Pirate's House, now we're talking. This bad boy was built in 1734 in the city of Savannah. 
This was actually where the gardener lived on the property of a large estate, but the estate is no longer standing, making the caretaker's house the oldest house in the state now. Apparently, the gardener was trying to grow mulberry trees, but that didn't work, so he moved out, and it became a tavern for pirates. There may or may not be buried treasure in or underneath this building. This house in Hawaii took a lot of work to assemble. The timbers were shipped from Boston and went all the way around Cape Horn to get there. Then the frame came on another ship eight months later. By the time all the wood got to Hawaii to make their first building, it was practically 1821. Hawaii has tons of trees, so I don't know why somebody didn't just make their first home out of some of those. Another state, another mission. This one went up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho in 1850. Belgian Catholic missionaries were busy assimilating Native Americans, and they needed a building in which to finish the assimilation. The interior walls were made of painted newspaper, and the chandeliers were made of tin cans. Talk about designing on a budget. And it's made of wattle and daub, which means it was built without nails. What is wattle and daub, you ask? It's a woven lattice of wooden strips held together with wet soil, clay, sand, animal dung, and straw. Okay, so this building's made of poop, and it's still standing? This one's unique looking. It's actually been restored quite a bit and there's controversy as to if this counts as the oldest standing building, but here we are, a building within the Fort de Chartres. I don't know if I'm saying that right. This building was a powder magazine building, meaning it held ammunition. The whole Fort de Chartres went up in the early 1750s and was made of limestone. Hey, this looks like somebody's house. It was somebody's house. Indiana's oldest city is Vincennes, way down by the Illinois border. This is Grouseland not to be confused with Graceland. It went up in 1804, originally for William Henry Harrison, our ninth president. It got its name because of all the grouse in the area. Those are birds. Here we are in Iowa, looking at the Louis Arundo log house. It's made of logs. In 1833, the cabin was built in a neighborhood in Dubuque, but then was moved across town. And as you can see, this is actually two buildings combined into one, because that's what they did back then. As the family grew, they would add a second cabin and join the two with a connecting breezeway called a dog trot. That was where the dogs would hang out and stay out of the rain. That's true. This is a grandiose structure, certainly not a thrown together log building. This is Fort Leavenworth in Leavenworth, Kansas. But that's not the oldest building in the state. Inside of Fort Leavenworth is the Rookery, a building used to house officers. Apparently military families still live there and they say it's haunted. Rumor is the ghost is the mother of General Douglas MacArthur, who lived there for a while. In 1790, this house was erected in Louisville, Kentucky. It's called the Zachary Taylor House. That's the name of our 12th president. He lived here. Now, originally, his family lived in a modest little log cabin, but that wouldn't suffice for the future president of the United States. It's a two and a half story Georgia colonial red brick L-shaped house. That's a mouthful. Of course, the oldest building in Louisiana is now a bar located on what is now Bourbon Street. The Lafitte's blacksmith shop was originally a blacksmith shop. Nobody knows the exact day the home was built, but the best guess is sometime between 1722 and 1732. Look at the guy who built it. He looks menacing. He was a slave-owning privateer, entrepreneur, spy, diplomat, and war hero. He was busy. What did you do today? The William Whipple House is the longest standing building in the state of Maine, located in the town of Kittery. This was a garrison home designed to protect people from attack from Native American raiding parties. There's still musket balls lodged in some of the thick wooden planks here. And that was in 1660. Seems like there's been battles going on forever in America. Huh, everyone? This house in Williams Wharf, Maryland was built in 1652 by the then governor of the colony of Maryland, Robert Brooke. You can still see where the original first story was and the outline of the original roof. The Fairbanks house was built in Massachusetts in 1637. Dendrochronologists determined this is the oldest timber framed house in the country. Dendrochronologists are people who study wood. The man who built it was Jonathan Fairbanks, who came over from England in 1633. This was originally his farmhouse. People marvel at how well this home has withstood time, since so many others constructed the same material are no longer standing. So apparently, Jonathan Fairbanks was a good builder. Mackinac Island is one of the most visited places in Michigan. The Officer's Stone Quarters, located within Fort Mackinac, is the oldest remaining building in the state. This fort was built in 1780 by the British. Boo! But it wasn't the first fort here. The first one was too close to the shore, so this was the second one they made. And they made the walls four feet thick to withstand attack. That's probably why it's still standing. Another fort. I'm getting sick of forts. This is Fort Snelling in Minnesota, right outside of present-day Minneapolis, at the confluence of the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers. It was built in 1825 and is made of brick and stone. The land on which this was built was purchased from the Native American Dakota people. 
We paid the Dakota people $2,000 for the 100,000 acres on which the fort was built. They got ripped off. Mississippi's oldest building is the LaPointe Krebs House, built in 1757. It's in Pascagoula. It's called an old French fort, but it really wasn't a fort. It was a small home, about 37 feet wide and 62 feet long. The frame is pine, and the walls were made of a combination of Spanish moss, clay, and oyster shell concrete. It looks kind of beat up, but so does everything else in Mississippi. No, that's mean. This ancient home in St. Genevieve, Missouri was constructed in 1787 by French-Canadian settlers. Many French settled in Missouri on the banks of the Mississippi River because it was a strategic trading location. This home was built in the posts on sill style. It's very complicated to explain what the posts on sill style construction entails. Hey now, that's a fort. Good for you, Montana. This is Fort Kona. It was built in Montana's Mission Valley on the northern side of the state by Flathead Lake. It was a Scottish guy who built this place way back in 1847. He then married a native woman and they had 12 kids. 12 kids? And <laughs> these little homes? Where'd they all sleep? At any rate, the family who first lived here made their living trading fur, buffalo meat, and rawhide. That's so Montana. Another teeny little log cabin people. The Bellevue Log Cabin was built in Bellevue, Nebraska, right on the banks of the Missouri River near present day Omaha. It's estimated that this little guy was made in 1832. The first cabin they built was too close to the river and people were getting cholera because I guess cholera lives in the water. It's made of cottonwood and has a dirt floor. Another fort, this one's in Las Vegas if you can believe it. They didn't knock this down and stick a casino in already? Missionaries from Utah came to Nevada and made this adobe fort in 1855. Adobe is mud and straw mixed together and dried to make a strong brick-like material. This handsome timber-framed house is the oldest surviving structure in the state of New Hampshire, dating all the way back to 1664. It's called the Richard Jackson House. He was a cooper. Those were craftsmen who made barrels and buckets out of timber staves. That's probably why this house was made of timber. He made a house out of his job so that he would have a place to work. Man, this thing's barely standing. Another timber structure, this one's in New Jersey and it dates back to 1638. It's in Gloucester County. Immigrants from Scandinavia built it out of white oak and miscellaneous mortar caulking. Again, originally this log cabin had a dirt floor. Historians say this home is very rare and unique. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Have you? Hey now, speaking of Adobe, this one puts the one in Nevada to shame. This is by far the oldest building in the entire country that still stands to this day. It's New Mexico's Taos Pueblo, estimated to have been built between 1000 and 1450. That's a long time ago. Clearly, the Native Americans lived here. You can do an entire video about this one building alone, but we have to move on. Surprisingly, to me, the oldest building in New York is in Brooklyn. It's called the Wyckoff House, and it was made in 1652. The man who built it was from the Netherlands. He was a farmer and a magistrate. This was apparently his farmhouse. Before Brooklyn was all crowded, it was filled with colonial farms. Dutch American landowners, enslaved and freed Africans, and later European immigrants labored on some of the country's most fertile land here. That was from Wikipedia. No trolls, where I live isn't the oldest building in North Carolina. It's actually the Lane House in Edenton. It was made in 1719. Now the people who purchased this place had no idea they had bought the oldest structure in the state. They went on to remodel it and started digging around and realized there was a house inside of their house. You can see where the side is peeled away there to show the original house underneath the renovation. This looks pretty isolated. It's in North Dakota, so it clearly is isolated. It's an old trading post in Walhalla, originally constructed in 1843. It was thought to have been a fur trading post. Back then, beaver was the main pelt of choice, but bison pelts became the de jour for people on the plains. And there were plenty of bison back then. There were once 30 million bison in this fine nation. And then from 1830 to 1880, the bison population went from 30 million to 324. At one point, 5,000 bison were killed here every single day. And that is so sad for the bison. This is a fort. It wouldn't be too hard to overcome this with much effort. It's Ohio, what did you expect? A French explorer built it in 1769. Way back in 1824, Fort Gibson was built in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. This place was a big deal back then. It was originally built as an office where they could manage the wars between the Osage and Cherokee Indians, but it later served as a jumping off point for Western settlers who were going out West and as an outpost between the newly settled Missouri and the new country of Mexico. 
The Malala Log House in the Cascade Mountains was long forgotten about until it was discovered recently. Nobody actually knows who built the place or when it was built, but the best guess is the 1790s. It was likely home to Canadian fur trappers. Today, it's not still way up in the middle of nowhere. It's been moved to a different location and it's being painstakingly restored. So I don't know if that really counts. I mean, is a building an original building if it's been rebuilt? This cute little log cabin is likely very chilly during Pennsylvania winters, especially way back in 1640 when they didn't have electric blankets. Are electric blankets still a thing? They were so popular in the 80s. Another oldest building in the state that's now a bar. Actually, this one's been a bar for a long time. It was somebody's home when it was first erected in 1652, but then in 1673, it was turned into a tavern. That makes it the oldest bar slash tavern slash restaurant in the country. And it's also estimated this is the 10th oldest bar slash tavern slash restaurant on earth. This was also the meeting place for many important delegations where they drank ale and pondered the future of this nation. Good for you, Rhode Island. In 1697, a Frenchman established a plantation in Berkeley County, just north of Charleston. Most of his income came from growing crops, harvesting trees, and raising cattle. This was his home. Fort Sisseton in South Dakota goes way back to 1864. It was built on the hills overlooking the South Dakota prairies, making it easy to survey the land and defend. It was used by the U.S. Army in the late 1800s as an outpost for cavalry soldiers. Now, we were defending our land from foreigners. These forts were built to keep peace among Native American tribes, as well as keep peace between Native Americans and us. Ooh, this place looks haunted for sure. It looks like there's a shadow of a ghost man standing in the yard. This timber-framed mansion was the first home in Tennessee to have glass windows. The man who built the property was a trader, catering to the area's first settlers. It's in Elizabethton, due east of Johnson City, and near the Elizabethton Haunted Forest. The Alamo! Of course, everybody knows the Alamo. This is one of the most famous places in America. It was originally called the Mission of San Antonio de Valero, and it went up in 1718. It also served as a prison, hospital, and garrison, but it's best known for the Battle of the Alamo in 1836 when the Mexicans, led by Santa Ana, took the building despite a strong opposition from 200 armed men, including James Bowie and the legendary Davy Crockett. The battle lasted 13 days, and the Mexicans had thousands of troops. We lost that battle, but eventually Texas gained its independence from Mexico, so take that, Mexico. Where's the basement? Excuse me? Aren't we gonna see the basement? And no, there's no basement here. This isn't as cool as the Alamo. It's in Utah. Mormons made it. In Little Panel, Vermont, it's a cute little cabin that's been called the War Right Home. There's some controversy as to exactly when this place was built, but sometime around 1758 sounds about right, according to historians. Jamestown Church is the oldest building in Virginia. It was erected as a place of worship in 1739. The original part of this church was just 50 feet long by 20 feet wide, and it was built on a foundation of cobblestone and brick. Now, Jamestown was the original capital of Virginia back in the day, and it was named after King James of England. People back then practiced Church of England, and apparently if you didn't attend church back then, you could have your food rationed, or you could be killed? What the? Aw, this looks like some little old lady's cookie shop. This place is more manly than that. It's a building on what was part of Fort Nisqually in Washington, built in 1833 as a fur trading post on the Puget Sound. Apparently, this building was a granary, used to store grain and animal feed, not cookies. Man, I thought the oldest building in West Virginia would look more rustic than this. It's Aspen Hall, a Georgia mansion built in Martinsburg in 1745. This house was likely much smaller when it was originally constructed, probably just the first floor at the time. It's made of limestone. This house looks like it was built in the 70s. It was actually built in the 1770s. It's called Tank Cottage, and over the years, it's had some restoration done. Stuff like the outside clapboard was added on. A French-Canadian fur trader made this house. Man, how many of these were built by French fur traders? They were clearly excellent craftsmen. And now the last oldest building. The fossil cabin at Fort Laramie, Wyoming is the clear winner when it comes to unique building materials. Much of the outside was made using dinosaur bones. It was erected in 1849. Again, the fort was used for fur trading when it was first made, and then it was purchased by the U.S. Army. Okay, so that's our rundown of the oldest building in every single state. We learned a lot, didn't we? Now think about that. A lot of these buildings were built more than 300 years ago. Now, 300 years is really nothing. I mean, comparatively, we're still a young country. I mean, there's places in England and Greece and Ireland and... 
other parts of Europe that have buildings that are 5,000 years old. So 300 years old is really nothing. But think about that next time you're walking around your house. Do you think your house that you're in right now is gonna be here in 300 years or 200 years or even 100 years? No, really. Will it? Buildings, old buildings, 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 old buildings, 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 old buildings, 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 old buildings, buildings. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great! You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.